Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be looking at how to simulate an X-band waveguide. We know that for an X-band waveguide, the width is 0.9 inches and the height is 0.4 inches. So let's start the design. First, open the CAD FICO and click on create a new model. Okay. So first thing first, let's set the units to inches. So go under model attributes, model unit, change it to inches, click OK. And for waveguide, we can just represent it as a simple cuboid with PC on all the faces and ports on either end. So let's construct the cuboid. So go into construct, create solid, cuboid. And there are two ways of assigning the solid. Um, there are two definition methods, basically. The first one is base corner with depth and height in which the center is at the corner. The other one is base center with depth and height in which the center lies on the center. So I always like to choose base center with depth and height so because it's kind of symmetrical. So let's keep it at that. And then let's choose the depth to be 0.9 and the height to be 0.4 inches. And let's leave the width to be like one inch and we'll rename this as X band waveguide and hit create. So this will create a PC box. So the next thing we need to do is to assign the inner region of this box to free space. So click on X band and under the regions, Region one, double click, choose the medium as free space, click OK. And make sure that all the faces are assigned PEC. Ensure that all the faces are set to PEC by clicking in on control and left click and select all the faces, right click on it, click on properties and change it to PEC. Okay, so now let us assign the ports. So for assigning the ports, click on source load and under ports, you can choose the waveguide port here. First, you need to select the face where you need to assign the port. In this case, it's face six. Click on waveguide port and hit create. So this will make it transparent and you can see that this port is being created. So this blue line indicates that this is a port or maybe you can call it like a 50 ohm termination without a source or without an excitation. To convert this dummy 50 ohm port to an excitation, we should assign a waveguide source to it. So go under source load, source on ports, click on waveguide source and hit create. So now you can see that it changes from red um, blue to red. So this indicates that this is not just a 50 ohm termination, but it is a source indeed. Now do the same for the other side. So click on the phase three and assign waveguide port to it and then assign a source to it. All right. So now our entire setup is done. The next thing you want to do is to set your frequency. So under configuration, click on frequency. And there are multiple options for choosing your range. Here I would like to choose continuous interpolated range. Let's go for, I know X band goes from 8.4 to uh, 12.4 gigahertz. So I would go from like say, for, for just for the sake of demonstration, eight to 10 gigahertz and click okay. So now my frequency is set. The next thing is what we request from this design. Basically, we wanted to look at the S parameters, S11 and S21. So for that, you can go under configuration specific request, right click and say multiport S parameters, or you can go under the request tab and choose multiport S parameters under configuration. So you click on multiport S parameters and add both the ports, port one and port two, so that you know we, can, we want to calculate both S11 and S2. S22 as well as S12. Hit create. So for checking on just the S parameters, we don't need a standard configuration. So you can just click on standard configuration, right click and say exclude. So this completes the setup. The next step is to mesh. So click on mesh, create mesh, and click on mesh. So this will 
discretize the geometry into the surface of the geometry into triangles and it will invoke uh, you know surface currents and solve the maxwell's equations with boundary conditions and then we can get the fields from there so this is basically the method of movements uh, using surface equivalence principle. So now we are completed with the setup, including the meshing part. The next step is to check if all our setup is correct. To do that, go into solve run, click on CEM validate. If everything is green, tick mark, which means that your setup is right. So it looks like it's right. So we are good to go. We, we can straight away simulate this design. The next step is to save the design. So click on save, a dialog box will open, give it a name here I gave it as waveguide underscore xpen and give it the path to be saved. So we have saved the design. The next step is to click on FICO solver and let it run. While it's running, I just want to bring you a notice to you here is that why you can improve the accuracy of this by clicking on solver settings and activating double precision for data storage precision before running the file if uh, you know if either your file uh, does not run or it uh, if your frequency does not converge this is one best way to make it converge so it's running so let's wait for it to complete So this is completed, so click OK, click on Post FICO, and let it open. So here you go, this is your uh, post-processing window where you can visualize the results. So under Create New Display, click on Cartesian. Under S Parameters Requests, Double click on S parameters twice, and then change uh, one of them to S21. So you see they are in linear scale, so change it to dB, both these values. Oops. All right, now you can see that, uh, you know, S21 is perfectly zero dB and S11 is minus 80 dB. It's typical characteristics of uh, X-band waveguide from eight to 10 gigahertz. Yep. That comes to the end of our video. Thank you for watching.